Hello and welcome to E4M Live from Khan this year. I'm very happy to have with me Hamish Davis. He's a global chief growth and marketing officer at Wavemaker. Hamish, nice to see you again. It's Lovely always a pleasure to meet you. Lovely to see you again. Yes. Um, Hamish, uh, first of all, I just want to ask you, looking back over the year, how would you assess the growth of uh, Wavemaker? You've had a pretty incredible year. Yeah, 2023 was was a was a, was a really good year for us. Um, delighted that we ended up being the most successful media network worldwide, uh, which was a huge achievement. Uh, and the the kind of success of that was really the balance of retaining clients. We had a 73 percent retention rate, which is three times the the average. I think that the official rate from convergence last year was 25%. So we came in at 73% of retentions. Uh, and that was everywhere around the world, um, North America, Europe, acro across the business. And indeed, India as ever is always one of the one of the jewels in our crown. So uh, it was a very satisfying year. And to get that officially confirmed was, was uh, yeah, really good, good, good way to end the year. Uh, let's just uh, elaborate a little bit more on India because you've retained your clients as you just mentioned and also you've had some significant wins this year if you could just elaborate on that. Yeah, the biggest win in India was, was Reckitt uh, which was 75 million plus. Uh, he wanted one of the biggest FMCG clients in, uh, in India uh, and that came in mid-year and it's been going very well. It's been a relationship that's really flourished since we, since we took it over. Um, and that was our, I think in, in a global scale, that was number seven, the seventh biggest win or retention for us worldwide, which is an illustration of just how important India is as a single business to drive growth um, around, around the world. Uh, globally, what are you seeing the sentiment right now? How do you see it? This year, is, uh, this year is, has kind of uh, been a little bit calmer. I mean, I, I talk very specifically from a, from a new business perspective. The, the business is... There, there has been several very large business, uh, new business pitches in, in the first half of this year. Uh, you know, and two, two that are very close to us, obviously Unilever and, and, and Amazon are two huge game changer pitches that are in the market. Uh, so there's been a series of very large pitches. What we haven't seen so much of is the, the more medium and smaller size business, business pitches, either locally or regionally. Um, and, I, and I'm not sure why that exactly is it might be because there has been so many big pitches in the market that people have been put off or, or other reasons that you can never you can never quite tell uh it's a it's, a, it's an erratic business is, is new business uh but certainly this year has been dominated by a few major pitches and only now actually in the sort of early summer were other other opportunities coming to the fore You've mentioned that the large clients have called for pitches, but the small and medium clients have not called for pitches. Uh, I also want to get your take on new economy clients. Yeah. Are they pitching? Are they calling for pitches? Or has that, dry, has that stopped because the fund's drying up and also that they have curtailed their ad spends? I th uh, yeah, I, th I think when we last spoke, there was a lot of uh, new economy, fast growth business around. And we'd been very successful with that in the previous few, few years. And as a result, actually had established a fast growth practice worldwide. Um, what had happened, I think, with interest rates going up is that the VC funding dried up quite quickly. So we saw a lot less fast economy business in the last couple of years. With interest rates coming, coming down again now, we're beginning to see a little bit of an uptick on, on fast growth, and we will obviously be embracing that based on the great track record we have with a lot of businesses like, like Netflix and, and DoorDash. Um, I think the focus right now is on EV. So a lot of Chinese brands, big Chinese brands coming into other markets, uh, and they're starting from scratch in terms of awareness. So uh, I think we could see that as quite a, quite a, um, a vibrant channel in the next uh, few, few years. There's been a pivot for agencies and Wavemaker to an outcome-based model. So how is this now panning out? There is, there is absolutely intention, I think, for all, at an industry level and particularly at Group M as well to, to drive to more outcomes-based. And what has helped, I think, in, in the last 12 months is really the technology gains that we and, and other networks have had. So since we last spoke, we've launched WPP Open, which is our new integrated platform for all of our services across the group but in media uh, uh, absolutely an integrated process 
And what that means in reality is the joining up of the various components we've done historically separately. So the discover stage and when you're building strategies, the planning stage when you're putting plans together, activation when you're actually going to market and buying stuff, and then the measurement stage. Um, and what, what we've done in the last year is to launch this with some of our biggest clients like Coca-Cola uh, and Nestle. It's two big ones that have basically embraced this platform already. Uh, and now that's going to allow us a, a, a much quicker, smarter, faster approach, but also enables hopefully more outcomes-based models as well because the measurement is so entrenched in the, in the, in the planning process. So technology is allowing us to get there quicker. And now hopefully with clients taking a more progressive view uh, around remuneration models, we can make a, make a bigger jump. Because I would say in the last year, it probably has been less than hoped, but I think in the next year, it could be a lot, lot faster. Uh, somebody told me, uh, you know, one of the uh, agency people, they call themselves the pitch junkies, which I believe that you also would be because they were just focused on pitching and they loved pitching. So I just want to ask you that you've been involved in so many pitches, countless. Uh, what is the change you're seeing from the client end, especially multinationals? Well, big question. Uh, clients... Clients have got a lot smarter in terms of the fundamentals to really build uh, business success, and they they don't they're not looking for one particular thing. They're looking for for everything. So it goes without saying, you know, great pricing and great trading as, as ever for for a media pitch. That's going to be pretty fundamental. Great talent, uh, but what you're now seeing is a lot more focus on on operational excellence across the world, and um, making sure that. Uh, you have great tools and technology. So the WPP op open platform, the integrated process and those four stages, that has gone from being a kind of very progressive thing to being something that you know most big clients will demand now uh, because it's pretty fundamental to running efficient, effective business and showing up consistently around the world. Uh, what's been the highlight for you from the Indian market uh, there's lots. I mean, I you know I, I've been to India twice this year, once to Bangalore and once to to Mumbai. I always love the energy you're seeing in India, the the, the talent, the creativity. Um, clients like Mondelez, you the merger of of data tools and tech with great creativity. That you know the work you get out of India is is second to none worldwide. So I always like to see uh, like to see that from India, and you you, you see it in, in buckets. Um, I think the the biggest thing is just how technologically advanced India is as a market. Uh, I know Modi had a vision to really digitize India, and certainly from a business perspective, it's very tangible when you're with my with the teams in in our offices that just the the level of, of tech savviness that the indians have relative to many other markets is, is really quite impressive so it's tangible in, in a business perspective you mentioned 73 percent retention rate yeah. but india has had a hundred percent retention rate as well as a big client added to the kitty which is the racket so what would you say about it? What's the differentiator you believe that WaveMaker brings to the table? I mean, WPP, Group M, WaveMaker, we're all very dominant positions in, in the Indian market. And uh, that, that leadership advantage is very tangible. So I think that's why clients are reluctant to leave us. And that's why we can, can win big clients like Reckitt. So uh, it, I think it really is the advantage of being a really dominant player in the market and being able to invest wisely in talent, in technology, in, in, in creativity. Uh, and also the joined upness of our, of our, of our networks. So, you know, for, for WaveMaker specifically, the relationship they have with Ogilvy really delivers amazing tangible benefits for the likes of Mondelez or Vodafone. Um, you can see the difference when you've got teams working very closely together under a common purpose and they, you know, it's doing, doing ground, groundbreaking excellent work any standout work uh, from the global region or apac or india which you believe has been the highlight of the year so far i haven't seen it yet this year for the honest answer um i think we are all looking for the uh Shara khan the, uh, the next yeah. version of that because that was just so groundbreaking in its approach and the the mix of creativity and and technology, and technology 
to deliver something qu quite brilliant. Uh, so we are we're always searching for the next one of those. You're the chief. Uh, you're the global chief growth officer. So I want to peg you down on this. What do you anticipate uh, for WaveMaker this year? What's the great your growth you're looking at? And also, if you could be a little bit more specific about India, what is the number you're looking at from there? This year, we're making a few bigger bets. So uh, historically, you you go after small, medium, and, and large size clients. This year, we have really doubled down on some some very big pitches. And if they come off, we're going to have a very good year. And if they don't, we'll have a, a less exciting year. But uh, so we've kind of had a bit more of a focus strategy this year. Um, for India specifically, as ever, India's got a big number. Uh, I think they've, I think I've got a target of about 300 million of new business for them. Uh, because we need markets like India and China to grow faster than, than more mature markets in, in North America and, uh, and, and Europe. So always... Um, I'm sorry to my brilliant colleagues in in India, but it's like they always have a little bit more uh, to to put into the to put into the pot. Hamish, thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure speaking to you. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Hope to see you in India next time.